choir master, according to Do Not Destroy, a mictem of David. Do you indeed decree what is right, you gods? Do you judge the children of man uprightly? No, in your hearts you devise wrongs. Your hands deal out violence on earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray from birth, speaking lies. They have venom like the venom of a serpent, like the deaf adder that stops its ear, so that it does not hear the voice of charmers or of the cunning enchanter. O oh God, break the teeth in their mouths. Tear out the fangs of the young lions, O oh Lord. Let them vanish like water that runs away. When he aims his arrow, let them be blunted. Let them be like the snail that dissolves into slime, like the stillborn child who never sees the sun. Sooner than your pots can feel the heat of thorns, whether green or ablaze, may he sweep them away. The righteous will rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He will bathe his feet in the blood of the wicked. Mankind will say, surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we praise you this morning for your dominion is an everlasting dominion and your kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing and you do your will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay your hand or say to you, what have you done? Father, you are continually with us. You guide us with your counsel and you protect us from evildoers. To you belongs all glory, honor, and praise. Knowing these truths, we have often thought of ourselves as rulers of our own kingdom. Like the Pharisees, we often create our own rules and guidelines just to serve our own interests. In our folly, our pride swells. We waste our time building our fame and riches. We want our name to last forever. We trip over our pride, yet we continue to seek the advice of the world instead of running to your word. Please cleanse us of our biggest idol, ourselves. Help us look to serve you, the great and holy one, whose name will forever reign above all nations. For who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has measured the spirit of the Lord, or what man shows him his counsel? Whom did he consult, and who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are counted as dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing in emptiness. Father, we ask these truths to be proclaimed in the country of Iraq. They are godless people chasing after a false idol in their Islamic beliefs. As a country, they know nothing of their sin and who was sent to save them from their sin. But how then will they call on him whom they've never believed? And how are they to believe in him who they've never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? So Lord, we boldly ask you to raise up laborers, even from this body of believers, to go and share the good news of Jesus Christ. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Protect those facing the evils of the Iraqi people and government. Help them trust in the promises you provide in your word. We ask the same for our own country, state, county, and city. The harvest here is plentiful, yet the workers are few. Raise us all up to be laborers for you. Help us shed our desire to be pleasing to man, but be pleasing to you. Help us be loving to them by sharing your truths. What good is their happiness if they do not have Christ? What good is their social acceptance if they do not accept the promised one? What good are their riches if they are spiritually bankrupt? It's all nothing if not for the glory of God. We know this to be true, that there is only one God who sent his son Jesus to be a propitiation for our sins. In him and him alone is our salvation. It's not by our works, fame or family name will we be saved, but only by faith in the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, may this gospel be preached, heard, learned, and lived out this morning for your glory and our good. Amen. Amen. 